All right, so now we're thinking about spatial clustering, another way to understand our cheatgrass data, another way to understand what information we have operating here. Clustering is a relevant spatial uh, measure. Are things clustered? Are they close together? Are they dispersed? Are they evenly spaced apart? Are they random? Do they have no coherent spatial pattern? So clustering is one of the key exploratory spatial analysis tools. So we're gonna do some spatial clustering stuff. Uh, in this case, we're going to start off sticking with our lovely cheatgrass data and we're gonna work on average nearest neighbor. Let's pull that up out of arc here. Get rid of all my lovely symbology. Uh, average nearest neighbor. There we go, spatial statistics. You know the symbols changed? If you're paying attention to the symbols, we got the hammers, those are different tools. Well, the scroll here, those are scripts. That's right, we're scripting all of a sudden. Yes, it's still a nice graphic user's interface, but never forget that Python is really running the world underneath. Pretty easy, we need a feature class. Well, how about my lovely cheat graphs that I just did? And I need a distance method. Uh, we're gonna use Euclidean. What's the difference between Euclidean and Manhattan? Well, Euclidean is the default uh, and it's also the straight line distance between two points. Uh, you've probably heard this as the crow flies. Now that works for most things, unless you're working on street networks, then you would use a Manhattan distance. Manhattan calculates differences or distances between two points using right angles, like you were driving a taxi cab in Manhattan. So we're gonna stick with Euclidean because you know we're out here in the wild. Lastly, we're gonna click this generate report button. You might think, oh, okay. What is it going to do if I don't click generate report? Well, you're not gonna get a report, then you're not gonna know anything because there will be no report. It's just gonna run and be like, I ran it. Then you'll be like, cool, what happened? It's gonna be like, you didn't just help me to generate a report. You're gonna have to find out yourself. So always generate a report, let's hit run on that. So what this is going to do is calculate the average nearest neighbor for us. Um, where, where did it put that? Where are things going on? Well, this lovely green bar here, tells us that we've got some details. There's the details there. And then when we have some details, we can see that, so, okay, here's our nearest neighbor index, so on and so on. That's all great, but we asked for a report. Let's click on that. Oh yeah, that's pretty. That's a nice report. Now, in the case of my cheat graphs, I have a, a very high Z-score here of dispersal. There is less than 1% likelihood this dispersed pattern can be the result of random chance. Yeah, you think because it's a grid, because we sampled on some kind of easily spaced grid here, look at this, grid, 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 grid. Yeah, you think it's dispersed? I think it's dispersed. Let's see about our random points. Now, these were randomly generated points. So in theory, they should come out as random when we run our nearest neighbor tool. So, oh no, I did it on cheat grass again. Uh, let's do that on random points. There we go, random points, Euclidean, generate report. Uh, the random dancing tool still under development, though I heard they started to bring it back recently. Uh, let's see what we got here. Random, hey look, our random points are randomly generated. Who would have thunk it? Given the Z-score, this pattern does not appear to be significantly different than random. Good. Now, just by chance, if, if a p-value indicates 5%, let's see that p o five value. If a p-value indicates, you know, 95% confidence, then, then we would expect 5% of the time for our random points to actually be generated and look non-random. So you might run this on your random points and get a cluster or a dispersal, about 100 people in the class. So I'd expect five of you to have that happen. Isn't statistics fun? Back with more clustering in the next video.